For example, um, oftentimes one of the early stitches that um, we end up playing with is that stippling stitch. But oftentimes students will say that they, they will say, oh my gosh, you know, my stippling stitches, you know, it all looks the same, you know, and again, you might have, we might have seen quilts out there where these really large, large, large stippling designs going on. And oftentimes, you know, again, even that process um, of using a very large overall quilt design with the stippling, you know, might take away from the actual design of the piece pieced uh, quilt that you have going on behind you. So what I do find um, needing to be able to do is I want to try to get my stippling stitches to have some irregularity to them and even as I'm doodling them out or even as I get to the machine and I'm starting to stitch, I suddenly realize and feel myself getting into the same rhythm up and down, up and down. I've got to kind of uh, pop myself out and say, oops, I better get going in a different direction, kind of filling in here and there. And obviously the the scale or the the, the density of that that the stippling stitches or whatever design it is, again, we've, we've referred to it several times already, but um, I do wanna, you know, need to maintain that density if I'm gonna be that small, or there may be something in between um, the density purposes um, for the particular quilt that, that you're working on. But there's also times too, and, and again, we'll go ahead and maybe at this point get to the sewing machine, and then I'll, I'll show how I do go back and forth um, between working with the doodles on the paper and then also working with um, some of the different stitches um, on the machine as well. Now, something that you can be doing, again, for you to go back and refer to. Of course, with this particular video, right here, anytime, you can stop and freeze um, your frame, take some notes and say, oh, I wanna go back and check out how she was working on that stippling. Just stop, take a note, and then you can go back later. And you will then, obviously, then have some various ideas that will be stitched out and you can freeze and, and make notes of that at any point. But I do like to have a practice place where I can make up a little sampler, where again, I've had a chance to practice that stitch and have it available to me. So oftentimes I'll go back and refer to that sampler um, as again, part of my inspiration library.